So we are presenting Cardozo's four methods. So some background on Benjamin N. Cardozo. In 1932, President Herbert Hoover appointed Cardozo to the Supreme Court to succeed Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. Cardozo served on the court until his death in 1938. Throughout his teachings called The Nature of the Judicial Process, Cardozo has stated the four methods in this direct quote. The directive force of the principle may be exerted along the line of logical progression. This I will call the rule of analogy or the method of philosophy. Along the line of historical development, this I will call the method of evolution. Along the line of customs of the community, this I will call the method of tradition. Along the line of justice, morals, and social welfare, this I will call the method of sociology. Cardozo's first method is the method of philosophy. Logical progression paired with the rule of analogy makes up the method of logic. This method seeks to extend legal principles in ways that preserve legal consistency. The directive force of any principle may be exerted along the line of logical progression. Cardozo sometimes alludes to the philosophy as it were a small and barren and disciplined at times, while sometimes praises it to the highest of human endeavors. When the regulations are provided by the statute, the judge's job becomes easier. The Constitution trumps the statutes, but the statutes, if consistent with the Constitution, overrides the judge's law. The method of evolution, or called the method of history, is predominantly an investigation of origins, opposed to the method of philosophy or logic, which are mainly the works of reason. The judge should look to the history and their discretion in dealing with law. Consideration of what had been done before is important in this method. There is no progress without history, so the origins of the law must be minded. Laws today are an example from progress from past. Um, and a quote from Justice Felix Frankfurter says that judicial judgment must take deep account of the day before, yesterday, in order that yesterday may not paralyze today. Judicial restraint applied to present decisions are based off of past decisions. This method does not serve to fix direction of a principle. It is clear that in Cardozo's development, the method of history uh, limits the method to clarifying the problem rather than uh, talking about how to solve it. The method of customs, also known as the method of traditions, highlights the traditions that exist within a community. The integration of customs will help build and guide communities to lead with morality. It also helps guide judges in the path to influencing change and making an impact on the judicial process based on the community's view as a whole. Cardoza states that it is not so much for the creation of new rules, but for the tests that are to determine how established laws apply. It is considered as a method of change and adaptation, not a method of glorifying old or primitive national customs. Changes in customs of the community will give new content to legal institutions. The method of sociology um, might be the most important method because it connects to and stems from all of the other methods. Um, when the social needs demand one settlement rather than another, there are times we must, when we must bend symmetry, ignore history, and sacrifice custom in the pursuit of order. When there's gaps in the law, we find solutions based on social needs versus logical. It focuses on social welfare and the good of the collective body, and judges should look to social values rather than to personal values when making decisions so that they can avoid social advantages. Um, Roe v. Wade, 1973, and Bowers v. Hardwick, 1986. Justice Blackmon upheld adherence to the precedent throughout his dissenting opinion in Bowers v. Hardwick by focusing on how laws should change with society and decisions should not be made solely based on the past and personal prejudices involving religion and sodomy. It is important to note that Blackman's descending opinion did not follow Cardozo's method of history as he did not look to historical cases involving males, but rather two separate presidents, Stanley v. Georgia, 1969, and Cotts v. U.S., 1967, to draw his conclusions. 
In Roe v. Wade 1973, Justice Blackmun also seemed to uphold this method, but only to an extent. The Supreme Court invalidated any state law that prohibited first trimester abortions. In addition, the rights of the mother's privacy were discussed. However, at this point, Blackmun denounces that this and relies more on sociology and the overall well-being of the child, allowing for the state to intervene with the rights to abortion for the sake of the unborn child. Oberfell versus Hodges 2015 was a case brought before the Supreme Court that dealt with same-sex marriage. The plaintiffs consisted of 14 same-sex couples, with Oberfell being one of them. Alongside Kentucky, Tennessee, Michigan, the state of Ohio defended marriage as a union between one man and one woman and did not recognize same-sex marriages. The plaintiffs challenged these laws under the 14th Amendment. The questions raised during this case were, do same-sex couples have the right to marry in every state? Must all states recognize same-sex marriages that have been licensed and performed lawfully out of state? The court voted 5-4 that both of these questions answered yes under the 14th Amendment, Due Process and Equal Protections Clause. Chief Justice Roberts stated that this court was not a legislator. Whether same-sex marriage is good should be no concern to us. Judges have the power to say what the law is, not what should be. Uh, Justice Roberts' dissent, understand well what is dissent about, not whether in my judgment, the institution of marriage should be changed to include same-sex couples. It is instead about whether a democratic republic that this decision should rest with people acting through their elected representatives or with five lawyers who happen to hold commissions authorizing them to resolve legal disputes according to law. Justice Scalia said, the federal judiciary is hard across section of America. Take for example, this court, which consists of only nine men and one woman all of them successful lawyers who studied at Harvard or Yale Law School. Four of the nine are natives of New York City, eight of them grew up East and West Coast states, and only one hails from fast and East in between. Justices Thomas and Alito follow the same course for dissent, adding that this decision will have immeasurable consequences for our constitution and society. It is clear that these four justices asked Cardozo's attack Cardozo's method of sociology, more specifically that justices are considered legislators. Shank versus U.S. 1919 was a case that analyzed the Espionage Act concerning the military draft. This case regarded a group of individuals who were distributing leaflets to draft age men, encouraging them to resist the draft. Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes spoke as majority opinion that individuals who spoke out against the draft were subject to criminal proceedings. Debs versus U.S. was also a similar case in which individuals were speaking out against World War I. Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes again spoke as the majority opinion, stating that those who spoke out against the war were not protected under the First Amendment and were also subject to criminal proceedings. Gitlo versus New York 1925 was another case that dealt with freedom of speech and speaking out against the government. Gitlo was charged with criminal anarchy for publishing a communist newspaper which advocated for the violent overthrow of the U.S. government. However, in this particular case, Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes spoke in his dissenting opinion that Gitlo had not violated the clear and present danger test used in Schenck versus U.S there was basically no sufficient imminence to warrant punishing the speech. In Debs versus U.S. and Schenck versus U.S., individuals were speaking out against the military draft in the war, encouraging others to break the law. However, in Gitlow versus New York, the defendant was simply writing and making statements regarding their discontentment of the Espionage Act. Thank you.